Hello, my name is Aaron Norton, and I am delighted to tell you about an article in the Journal of Marital and Family Therapy about computer-mediated communication in intimate relationships. I wrote it with my co-authors, Joyce Baptist from Kansas State University and Bernie Hogan from the University of Oxford. Technology has enabled new forms of communication that has really transformed the way that we connect with those closest to us. Smartphones and tablets have become a part of ourselves that we use to learn and connect with our friends, family, and loved ones in ways never before imagined. For many couples, we use computer-mediated communication, such as texting and social media, to talk with and learn about our partners at least as much, if not more, as we do through face-to-face -face communication. We look at our partner's social media updates. We look at their friends' updates. We text throughout the day, and through location sharing, we can even know where they are at any moment. In this article, we examined the impact of technology on committed opposite-sex relationships through the lens of Dr. Kat Hartline's couple and family technology framework. This multi-theoretical framework assumes that computer-mediated communication has positive and negative influences on couple relationships through the ways that the ecological system of technology impacts the structure or their roles, rules, and boundaries, and the processes, such as happiness and relationship quality, of relationships. Because this new way of communicating is so new, we haven't fully figured out what's appropriate and what isn't. What is acceptable, one of the pieces of the ecological system, is often unclear. And one place that is still little understood is the acceptability for online socialization. One of the challenges for couple relationships is to establish boundaries and rules that define who participates in the couple's lives, and more specifically, how that interaction occurs. To do so, couples implicitly and explicitly identify what kinds of socializing behaviors are considered acceptable to maintain the fidelity of the relationship. These boundaries regulate couples' interactions to prohibit actions that would then betray trust. These boundaries can be broken through violations or bent through boundary crossings. Past research has found that the boundaries for online socialization in opposite sex relationships can be less clear online than in person. So we wanted to understand this very important construct, acceptability for online boundary crossing. We were specifically curious to understand how this related to online intrusion when someone monitors their partner's online activities without their knowledge, as well as relationship satisfaction and how responsive partners were to each other's needs. Our analysis used data from the Oxford Internet Institute's research project, Me, My Spouse, and the Internet, Meeting, Dating, and Marriage in the Digital Age, which investigated the role of the Internet in couple relationships. Our subsample from that research project included nearly 6,800 couples from 16 European countries. Using structural equation modeling in our data analysis, we found that partners felt less satisfied in their relationship and felt their partner was less responsive to their needs as they became more accepting of online boundary crossing, and that men who reported greater acceptability for online boundary crossing were more likely to have their partner report feeling less satisfied in their relationship. In addition, we found that when partners felt their partner checked up on their online activities, they also felt decreased relationship satisfaction and felt that their partner was less responsive to their needs. These results have important implications for clinicians, educators, and researchers. It may be really important for clinicians to really assess how couples use online socialization and monitoring behaviors and to then clarify the meaning of those behaviors. These results also add support to the need for relationship educators to develop curriculum specifically for computer-mediated communication. I hope you'll find this article engaging and useful. I wish you well in all of your important work that you do. Thank you for your time.